Could it be that the man who fronted the crucifixion of Jesus later believed in Jesus? What did the high priest see that changed his life and even made him resign from his high religious position? Did he see the risen Jesus? All these questions will be answered in today's video. For the sake of proper understanding, this video has been split into seven subheadings. So stay tuned and please like and subscribe to show your support and boost the channel's visibility. Now down to business. Number one, who is this high priest Caiaphas? Joseph Caiaphas, often referred to simply as Caiaphas, was a significant figure in biblical history. Serving as the high priest of the Jewish Sanhedrin during the first century AD, Caiaphas belonged to the Jewish priestly family, known as the House of Annas, which held considerable influence within the religious hierarchy of Jerusalem. His role as high priest positioned him at the apex of Jewish religious authority, responsible for overseeing the temple rituals and interpreting Jewish law. In biblical accounts, Caiaphas is prominently featured during the trial and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. However, his historical significance extends beyond these events. Caiaphas ascended to the high priesthood around AD 18, appointed by the Roman governor Valerius Gratus, and held this position until AD 36. This tenure coincided with a tumultuous period in Judea, characterized by social unrest and resistance against Roman rule. Caiaphas's leadership was marked by a delicate balance between preserving Jewish traditions and appeasing Roman authorities. His collaboration with the Roman occupiers while securing stability and favor for the Jewish elite also fueled resentment among the populace. Despite his religious duties, Caiaphas's political ordeals often overshadowed his spiritual responsibilities, leading to criticism from various factions within Jewish society. In the Gospel of John, Caiaphas is portrayed as prophesying unwittingly about Jesus' sacrificial death, declaring, It is expedient for you that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation should not perish. John chapter 11, verse 50. This statement, while pragmatic, reflects Caiaphas' willingness to sacrifice an individual for the presumed benefit of the community, revealing his inappropriate forms of judgment in his leadership. Number 2. How did Caiaphas and Jesus meet? The relationship between Caiaphas, the high priest, and Jesus Christ, the central figure of Christianity, is a complex aspect of biblical history. From the outset of Jesus' ministry, tensions between him and the religious authorities, including Caiaphas, began to escalate. Jesus' teachings challenged traditional Jewish beliefs and practices, garnering both admiration and opposition from various segments of society. Throughout the Gospels, interactions between Jesus and Caiaphas are depicted, often revealing different perspectives on matters of faith and authority. Caiaphas, as the high priest, represented the religious establishment, vested with the responsibility of safeguarding Jewish traditions and maintaining order within the community. Jesus, on the other hand, presented a radical message of love, forgiveness, and spiritual renewal, which resonated deeply with many but threatened the status quo. One significant point of contention between Caiaphas and Jesus was the question of Jesus' identity as the Messiah. While Jesus' followers hailed him as the long-awaited deliverer prophesied in Scripture, Caiaphas and other religious leaders viewed his claims with skepticism and suspicion. The clash of scriptural interpretations further fueled the hatred the high priest had, leading to Jesus' trial and crucifixion. Number 3. The High Priest's Role in Jesus' Trial and Crucifixion As the presiding authority of the Jewish Sanhedrin, Caiaphas wielded greater influence over legal and religious matters in Jerusalem. His involvement in Jesus' crucifixion reveals his complex interaction between religious authority, political self-interest, and divine providence. The Gospels depict Caiaphas as a central figure in the conspiracy to eliminate Jesus. Following Jesus' arrest, he presided over a hastily convened trial before the Sanhedrin, during which false witnesses testified against Jesus, accusing him of blasphemy and division. Despite the lack of credible evidence, Caiaphas and the religious leaders were determined to silence Jesus and maintain their grip on power. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 26 verses 57 to 68 recounts Jesus' trial before Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin, showing the orchestrated efforts to secure his conviction. Despite Jesus' silence in the face of false accusations, Caiaphas demanded a verdict, ultimately condemning Jesus to death for claiming to be the Son of God. This verdict, obviously based on religious blasphemy, also served the political interests of the religious elite and their Roman overlords. The Gospel of Luke chapter 22 verses 66 to 71 provides insights into Caiaphas's role in Jesus's trial, emphasizing the religious leader's determination to discredit Jesus and undermine his claims to messiahship. 
Caiaphas's questioning of Jesus about his identity and authority reflects the high stakes of the confrontation between religious beliefs and prophetic revelation. Number 4. The Crucifixion and Aftermath Following Jesus' death on the cross, the Gospels describe a series of extraordinary occurrences that rocked the city of Jerusalem and left witnesses stunned and bewildered. One of the most dramatic events recorded in the Gospels is the darkness that covered the land during the crucifixion. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 27 verse 45 describes how darkness fell over the whole land from noon until three in the afternoon, symbolizing the cosmic significance of Jesus' sacrificial death and the gravity of humanity's sin. In addition to the darkness, the Gospels also mention earthquakes that shook the ground and rent the temple veil in two. The tearing of the temple veil, as recorded in Matthew chapter 27, verse 51, symbolizes the opening of access to God for all people through the sacrificial death of Jesus, signifying the end of the old sacrificial system and the inauguration of a new covenant. The seismic events and supernatural phenomena that accompanied Jesus' death and burial served as a powerful testimony to the divine significance of these events. They underscored the cosmic implications of Jesus' atoning sacrifice and signaled the beginning of a new era in human history, marked by reconciliation and redemption. The Gospels also recount the reactions of various individuals to these extraordinary occurrences. Roman centurions guarding the crucifixion site were said to have exclaimed, Truly this man was the Son of God. Mark chapter 15 verse 39 acknowledging the divine nature of Jesus even amid their duty to execute him. For the followers of Jesus, the events following his crucifixion were a source of profound confusion and grief. The disciples who had placed their hope in Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah were devastated by his death and struggled to make sense of the events that had transpired. Yet little did they know that the darkest hour would soon give way to the dawn of resurrection and victory over death. Number 5. How did the high priest act after crucifixion, the disturbance he experienced? After the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the high priest Caiaphas likely experienced profound disturbance and internal turmoil as a result of the extraordinary events that unfolded. Despite his role in orchestrating Jesus' death, Caiaphas would have been unable to ignore the seismic shifts in the natural and spiritual realms that accompanied Jesus' sacrifice. The darkness that enveloped the land during Jesus' crucifixion would have been a haunting reminder of the gravity of his actions and the divine significance of Jesus' death. The tearing of the temple veil, a symbol of separation between God and humanity, would have underscored the atrocity of the moment and the implications of Jesus' atoning sacrifice. For Caiaphas, who prided himself on upholding religious beliefs and preserving the status quo, the supernatural occurrences that followed Jesus' crucifixion would have posed a significant challenge to his worldview. The disruption of the natural order and the testimony of witnesses, including Roman centurions, to Jesus' divine identity would have forced Caiaphas to confront the possibility that he had acted in error. He was deeply unsettled due to his role in Jesus' death and the signs and wonders that accompanied it. Caiaphas's disturbance may have been compounded by the growing movement of Jesus' followers, who proclaimed his resurrection and spread his message of salvation throughout Jerusalem and beyond. The rapid spread of Christianity in the aftermath of Jesus' death would have posed a direct challenge to Caiaphas's authority and undermined his efforts to suppress Jesus' teachings. Number 6. The High Priest's Vision of the Risen Messiah In the aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion and burial, Rumors of his resurrection began to spread among his followers, prompting speculation and uncertainty among the religious leaders, including Caiaphas. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 verses 11 to 15 records how the chief priests and elders conspired to spread a false narrative about Jesus' disciples stealing his body from the tomb, indicating their awareness of the potential implications of Jesus' resurrection. For Caiaphas, who had played the central role in Jesus' trial and crucifixion, the news of Jesus' resurrection was deeply unsettling. The realization that Jesus had triumphed over death and fulfilled his claims to be the Son of God posed a significant challenge to Caiaphas's understanding of religious authority and divine revelation. Caiaphas felt a deep, dark remorse, feeling the pains of guilt that he had ordered the death of the long-awaited Messiah. On this fateful day, he woke up from a nightmare that had been occurring for a long time now. He went out of bed, he went on to wash his face so he could calm down and then went on to his study to examine the prophecies, but the studying didn't help matter. Then he heard behind him, You condemned me that you might go free? Caiaphas looked behind him, and behold, the risen Lord stood before him with a soft bright light around him. He looked at Caiaphas with kindness and said, 
It was planned by my father to be a sacrifice for everyone's sin. Consumed with shock, he couldn't move and was sweating. He fell to his knees begging and all for him to be awoken by his wife. He told his worried wife about what he had experienced and said in a soft and shaken voice, this Jesus must truly be the Son of God. Number 7. Did Caiaphas convert to Christianity or what were his last days like? Some historical traditions and apocryphal texts suggest that Caiaphas may have experienced a conversion or change of heart following Jesus' resurrection. These accounts, while not canonical, depict Caiaphas as grappling with guilt and remorse over his role in Jesus' death and eventually coming to believe in Jesus as the risen Messiah. With the heavy feeling of guilt and remorse, Caiaphas was so troubled with what he had done to the prophesied Messiah. He was so troubled in his last days, such that he could barely sleep without crying, begging, feeling a grave darkness encompassing his soul. Due to his unstable nature, he resigned from his post as the high priest, though it was recorded that before he left, he gave a testimony of the wrongdoing he had done. He explained all he had experienced even down to his visions. In deep tears and remorse, he asked for forgiveness and openly declared Jesus as the prophesied Messiah. After all these, he resigned from his post, to which another was appointed. He spent most of his days in solitude, suffering from intense guilt. He would cry himself to sleep and wake up to remorse consuming his heart. Historical records indicate that Caiaphas's tenure as high priest came to an end around AD 36, after which he faded from historical prominence. The high priest who saw the risen Messiah felt the transformative power of Jesus Christ, but he was consumed by the guilt of what he had done. And just like the scripture says, if they had known, they wouldn't have crucified him. This was Caiaphas's greatest regret. If you found this video valuable, please like and subscribe to this channel. God bless you.